Carol Alfori. Weekdays, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. East Coast Radio. It is a Wednesday, and for me, it's a unique Wednesday. I got my kid with me for a few uh, hours. I think he'll only last about an hour or so. Uh, so I'm, I'm feeling your mums and dads and aunties and everybody as the schools are closed. And here's the last push of Woman Crush Wednesday. You know, it's one of my favorite features. I profile incredible women doing amazing things, and today is no different. Remember, you can catch us live on Facebook Live. That's East Coast Radio's Facebook page. Catch us live there and you can watch us literally in studio <laughs> as we chat. All right. So hailing from right here in Durban, but now based in Massachusetts in the USA. Uh, please welcome Dr. Portia Andlovo. She's an author. She's a speaker. She's a professor of international maritime business uh, lawyer and businesswoman. And as I said, she hails from right here in Durban, but based out in Massachusetts in the USA where she serves the Massachusetts Maritime Academy. Now, Dr. Uh, Ndlovu specializes in legal principles of international trade laws, particularly in maritime law, which directly includes international commerce, international trade, the law of the sea, environmental law, international diamond trade law subjects, and uh, all of these subjects have special interest to her. Uh, Dr. Ndlovu's research also extends to subjects such as Asia, Asia Pacific matters, maritime security, maritime parad- oh, I can't even say the word. Let me just introduce the lady because, wow, your resume, hey, it will leave someone spinning. <laughs> as long as they're not asleep by the time Yo, they <laughs> Spinning because, wow, your accolades are absolutely insane, Dr. Portia. Wow, thank you, Carol. That means a lot, uh, especially because I don't think of it as accolades. I think of it as serving. Wow. So thank you for that. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, already I'm inspired by how you look at what you do. Thank you so um, much. So thank you. I mean, you literally just landed from Massachusetts and I was like, please come to studio. Absolutely. We've been discussing this for the longest time. Yeah. So thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here. So thank you for, for honoring the interview. It's really great to have you. I think let's jump straight into it. You have a clearly a very interesting passion for maritime. Yes. Has it got to do with you growing up in Durban? Tell us how um, you got into this love for it. Yeah, actually, it all started back in Escort because the best days were spent next to either a river or a dam. Right. And then all the all the summer holidays were Durban, Port Chipson, Durban, Port Chipson, And just the look of the sea, the movement of the ocean. Uh, yeah, I just had to be there. Mm. And until... You know, fi- funny enough, the, the industry found me because I fell into it. Okay. Uh, because I, you know, I was doing law at a at UK's at N. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm thinking I don't know if I want to do divorces all my life or criminal law all my life because I I like those too. I was good at that, but um, I was like, no, I would like to. And then when the Admiralty, which is the maritime professor, walked in, yeah. I literally had an out of body experience. There was like this knowing that I'm I'm wow. linked to this man and I just pursued him and I was like, What? There's like law that involves ships and water, like my passion, what? And I also found out that it's very international, global, because mm. I'm very passionate about what the UN and all those types of organizations are trying to do as the world. Mm. And the maritime world is like that. It isn't just for South Africa or for Sweden or it just the waters makes cross. Or exactly. Yeah. So there's no you, border. Absolutely. Water border. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So it's it's been awesome to wow. get that opportunity. Yeah. And I mean, you've got a lot of degrees, <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, of course, your doctorate, um, and and so much. Um, I don't I don't even know where to start. But I think what I want to hone in on is, of course, as we go into the December period, we're going to be spending a lot of time in the waters, and I'm sure you're very Absolutely. aware of the situation of our waters in in case and i'm curious to hear what you think about what's Uh, happening here you know we can't swim here in umplanga but we can go to other beaches etc how do you feel as a person passionate about the waters oh absolutely uh first of all i'm always doing research on making sure that ships aren't polluting the water so that's Mm. the first thing Mm. uh because sometimes african coasts are treated differently Mm -hmm. because it's it's more seen like oh this is not the u.s we can dump whatever you Mm. know whatever so in terms of just uh, supporting what the government is already doing about and also what the international maritime organizations trying to do to make sure that ships aren't doing the wrong thing always researching on that and i'm seeing the effort that those bodies are putting in to the south african maritime safety authority all those people they are really putting in a lot of work to try and keep the coast like at, a, at the south africans best interests mm. but i'm really sad that 
there is like a general culture of not treasuring what we have mm. you know the uh, the just the the, just the general like trashing of beaches the urination everywhere mm. and um, I mean some problems on the water are caused by nature because you know when you've had floods when you've had infrastructure destruction right. all of those things right. are a factor when you've yeah. had movement and shifting of land because of erosion and things like that but the things we can help I'm very saddened when I see that we are not owning it and also I think I would like to put some of the res- a, a great responsibility on like municipal leaders to mm. to just do even more, mm. which I'm excited about because when you look at bodies like the Eteguini Maritime Cluster and those bodies that are actually in the city doing something, mm. you can see that first of all they are not only helping people to to gain financially and get businesses around the water Mm. but they're also trying to teach swimming so that you know the young people feel passionate because not all countries have so much coastline it's true you know so do something about that embrace it i really wish that we could love the water and love our coasts and um and just work together, you know, because mm. it can never be just a certain community. It takes everyone, Everybody. all the different I parties. Agree. Yeah. We're going to chat more about, I know you also have a record label. Oh, you, my goodness. You've written several books. <laughs> I mean, you're a busy lady. We're going to chat more about that. And I also want, before the hour wraps, just some inspiration because you work very hard and you work very hard away from home in Massachusetts and yeah. not here. How you do it? Because I know a lot of people are coming home and will be traveling again back for, to, to work all over the place Absolutely. away from family so we're going to chat about that in just a moment if you're just joining us let me paint the picture Dr. Portia Lovu is an author a speaker professor of international maritime business lawyer and businesswoman uh, and as I said she's from here um, but she currently lives in Massachusetts and uh, serves at the Massachusetts Maritime Academy so uh, we talked about your passion for water and maritime yes now I want to jump into your passion for writing you've written so many books Yes. Talk to us about that. (laughs) Uh, Absolutely. So one of the academic, um, you know, uh, requirements Mm. is that you should be able to profess. If you're going to be a professor, Mm. then you have to profess things. So writing gives me an opportunity to get actual data yeah. because when you speak about solutions you have to understand problems so the writing is at least for the, from the academic side is to make sure that data is collected in uh, respected and credible research methodologies right. and then you put it out there right. and hopefully someone will pick it up and i'm very very passionate about this because i have looked time and again and I can see sometimes the difference between people is the books they read and the books they didn't read wow it's not that they they're not capable or Mm. but it's just what did they know because how can you dream of something that you don't know that doesn't you don't even have a concept of it so that's why I put books out there one of my first book was inspired from the fact that there were hardly maritime law or South African books that were up up to date yeah. that were taking into account a lot of the new things that were happening in South Africa. Wow. Um, most of the books were quite outdated and a lot of them didn't account for some of the global um, interaction that we were having. So I was like, let me get, let me uh, create a, a, a much more afford- affordable book yeah. so that everybody can know this yeah. so that because so that you can care yeah. even if it's not a job that you end up in but care about the ocean because it affects us all it does it yeah. absolutely does and then on top of all of that you also have a record label oh my goodness and I, then the music part <laughs> like where did you fall in love with music that's a funny one I literally fell into that one so I've been writing music since I was five years old because I'm a very like um, expressive person right and I believe that you should speak the world you want to see like um, so positive vibes like put them out there confess agree with what's good um, so I'm so because I'm very wordy 
I can choose to like go on the dark side with my words or the light. So, so the record label was all about uh, trying to put words out there. And I had forgotten all about my music writing and all that until someone saw my songs and we were jamming together, just having fun. And, and then a year later, someone said, hey, I, you know, when we were jamming together and I saw your, your lyrics and stuff, would you like to actually record? And for, I had no experience with professional recording. <laughs> and I, but, you know, I'm not one to, to bury a gift or... Or not understand when it's time mm. So I was like yeah I'll be in studio And I was sitting there With like a, pro- a super professional Boston crew recording And I was like oh my gosh It's happening so I just faked it Till I made it I just played <laughs> the part But in all of that yeah. um, I realized that one of the Important things as well is to promote other people Because yeah. one of the things I'm very Passionate about is getting young People opportunities Because yes. um, some of them are just so talented they can rap they can sing they can do this then the other and these are part of our communities mm. this these you know unemployment and things like that i see it as such a burden and a destruction mm. so but your talents can actually pull you out of that so I because that. i could especially now with all the it solutions that we have and and all the 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 freely distributed platforms that people can have so what i do is that with my label is that i just sign up other artists that are whose vision i believe in and whose talent i believe you know we are linked with that person and then i just give them a chance to also upload their music so that they can sell i literally manage them for only 10 percent, and 90 percent goes to them um and then wow. i just try to market and do all that stuff and it's incredible um, I actually and wanna, get them gigs right yeah. and get them gigs <laughs> what is your message for for us women just to push us through and young people absolutely so for me i would say play to your strengths uh take time to rest and play and have good support relationships but also remember not to only only chase the comfort zone because if you don't challenge yourself you probably won't grow And that brings me to my next encouragement, especially for this generation, the young people. Try to understand that you live in a scientific world, a mathematical world, Mm. a data-driven world. So try to put some effort into your science, technology, and engineering studies because some of the solutions that we're going to see and the job creation in the future will come from that. So I know that it's not for all of us to sit in a lab and look at specimens and, you know, study things and come up with inventions of that nature. But when I look at even my own life, I'm so grateful that in high school I went the STEM route because my recent biggest treasure was to be invited to write next to for the scientific community next to Nobel laureates in the US like I was literally approached and they spend their own money to get your work out and they thought it was worth it to them for my work to come out and um, I wouldn't have understood all of those concepts of uh, trying to manage ballast water which is the water that's used on ships to keep them stable Uh, and sometimes it comes in with bad things so it, it, I spent so much time researching that and, and I, I found myself turning from lawyer to science um, yes I'm not a, scient- a scientist per se but because we live in a scientific world it didn't matter that you're, you're a lawyer now mm. I needed to now go and look for experts the right experts by having an understanding of what that scientific world is like right. and sure. yeah so that's I would that's really beautiful. like to encourage young people to go for that because you never know when you're going to need a new that information. Dr. Porsche and Lovu, thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. And uh, wishing you happy holidays, a beautiful Christmas and amazing 2023. Thank you so much. What a wonderful interview. Thank you. Carol Alfori, weekdays 9am to 1pm, East Coast Radio.